See, there's a reason I call God my King of Glory, is because um, He's become very real and personal to me, and uh, it's part of uh, what have I, I, I have experienced in my life, the things I've gone through. Yeah, the things I've gone through, and that have shaped me as an individual. And um, as telling part of this story, I want I want to uh, convey a few things. First of all, this box up here, you're probably wondering, you know, why is it labeled red, right? It, yeah, because it's my box, right? <laughs> this represents me as a person, this box. Right? And really, the plainness of the box represents all of us. See, God has a purpose and a design, and he creates us. Okay? So we are we are drawn on the drawing board of God's design table. And, and the box represents that. And inside the box are all the plans and thoughts and ideas that God has for our life. Okay? And so we come into this world, we're birthed, and... Obviously, we are a child at birth, right? Okay? And so, as we grow and develop, we have certain, what I'll call, emotional factors that affect us. Okay? And for me, as a child, it was fear. Okay? Because I grew up in a home, well, first of all, let me say, I was, at age three, put into a foster home. And was in a foster home till age seven. And part of the reason for that was because um, my birth parents had a difficult time uh, making it together. Um, my birth father was a womanizer and ran off on my mother. And my mother had a nervous breakdown and was in a mental hospital. And that's when they found us in the apartment, me and my two sisters, and put us into a foster home. In the hopes that they would get my parents to reconcile and get to work things out and, and eventually take the kids back, but that didn't happen. And so, in the foster home, um, the foster parents were rough around the edges, let's put it that way, and the father was abusive uh, physically. Uh, I can remember many times being beaten with a belt for what I can't even remember was any reason. In fact, I remember him basically lining us up because they had five other kids in the home, I'm assuming, where they're with their kids, and I can remember lining us up and just going down the road, beating us all. So it was not a very good good experience. And that colored my life, right? So the wrapping paper on here starts to, to show that, yeah, God, God created us, but now we start to show our uniqueness, right? And sometimes we, we make our own wrapping paper. Sometimes it's put there by the things we go through. So each of us as a child, I'm sure we have our own emotional factors, whatever they may be. But life continues and, and we grow and we go to school, we become a student, or pardon me, we, we're, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself, we're also um, labeled as a son or a daughter in the family that we're in, and actually moving from a foster home into um, an adoptive home where I became an only child at age seven um, as their only son, um, I faced a, a very big word called disappointment. Um, not sure why why that is um, outside of the fact that my mother was very emotionally abusive. Um, can remember the long drawn out fights we had where she'd say I was worth nothing essentially, uh, would never amount to anything, was stupid, and uh, all these negative comments. So as a son, I felt like I was a big disappointment. Okay? And again, that colors my world, colored who I was as an individual okay, in a different way. But like I said, we, we, life goes on, we, we go to school, we, we learn to become friends with people, and uh, you know we, we strive to be friends with others who are around us. Uh, but the, the emotional factor I had as a, as a friend is I encountered uh, rejection a lot. And um, so I was kind of lonely. You know, I was, I was um, a loner, as they would say. Um, I tried my best to uh, relate to people, but I felt like I couldn't relate a lot to, to the people I was around. And so the emotional tag I, I've got on this box is rejection. You know, I faced a lot of rejection. And again, that colored my world, colored who I was. 
and also uh, at that time as being a student, going to school, uh, there were a lot of expectations. That's what I put on the box here. And um, you know, as a student, you, you, you're expected to get good grades, you're expected to behave well, you know, um, to, to, to uh, learn, to grow, and, and I can remember <laughs> having a hard time spelling the word bicycle and really getting belittled for not being able to spell the word bicycle, you know? And um, just wondering why I couldn't live up to expectations, you know? Um, I had my dreams, of course, because they were in me. You know, God puts dreams in all of us, purpose and a plan. And uh, trying to pursue music as a kid in school um, got pushed down, you know? Uh, wasn't encouraged. Um, I did take piano lessons, and that was a positive, but uh, as far as trying to branch out and, and go for a music degree in school, my parents said, no, we're not going to pay for that. And so that really felt like, well, whose expectations am I supposed to live up to? Mine or theirs? And I ended up pursuing their expectations of becoming an accountant, which of course colored my world and brought a lot of further rejection and disappointment to my life because I wasn't fulfilling God's plan in my life. You know. And, I have a blog out there called betweenthedash.net, and I talk about how if we don't um, fulfill the role and the purpose that God has for us, we feel frustrated. We feel stagnant. Have you ever felt that way? Well, part of that is because you have dreams and desires that God has put in you that he's trying to bring out. And part of that bringing it out is going through this process. You see, because everything that happens to us happens for a reason. There's a reason God has brought me through this channel of events in my life and, and allowed me to experience these emotional factors because he was shaping my character. He's shaping who I am as an individual so that I can relate these things, you know? A lot of people, I think, I've seen similar issues as mine. I've seen <coughs> uh, shut down to life, become very bitter, become very hard, you know, because they don't see the greater purpose in it. I'm blessed in the sense that I feel like God grabbed a hold of me and, you know, shook that out of me and showed me what these things were for. Um, obviously, once I got through school, I became an employee. And um, part of being an employee is obviously a lot of responsibility, right? I mean, once you, once you leave the home, once you, once you leave college, and you're out on your own, the world is totally different, isn't it? You've got a lot more responsibilities, but you, you're going through the world now carrying all this baggage, right? Carrying all these things that have been pulled out of you. And, uh, you know, what you notice is every time that your life gets expanded or gets, how do I say this, when you give more of yourself and you're trying to live up to these other expectations, you're trying to be a good son. You're trying to be, you know, remember and provide a good childhood. You're trying to be a good employee. You're trying to be, you know, a good student of life. All these things. If you don't have God in your life, you have less and less of yourself to give. You notice that? And, and so you feel stretched and, and thinned out and weary. Because if God's not in your life helping you with this, you know, you're trying to pull these things out of yourself, but you're not getting something put in in return. And so there's less and less of yourself to give. I want you to pause and think about that. Um, play a couple more songs for you. You know, I was instructed by my, my uh, consultant that I'm working with that maybe I should give you these boxes to hold on to. I want you to, to, to watch this body. And, and I'm not getting these out in a, in a um, sense of this box belongs to you, <coughs> this is who you are. But maybe there's a reason that this box is coming to you right? because you got to think about that. <coughs> maybe maybe God is trying to, to say something to you in that box in, in that I hand to you. Um, just be open and open to that, and let let God speak to you tonight. I'm going to talk about those other boxes in a second, but but think about those things, okay?
when the storms begin to brew. But I'm not afraid of the rain that falls when I'm holding on to you. All the foundations have washed away. They can never stand on sand. You, O oh Lord, are a movable rock, and your love just can't be stopped. So I will cling to you, my God, my King. Oh no, I won't let go. I'm holding tight, cause I'm holding on for life. No matter what. This journey brings to you, oh Lord, to you, my love. I will cling. Like a cold grip around me tight, keeping me from the wind so cold. have lost their way when they have strayed. They can they make it on their own. But I would follow you, my God. And may I never leave your side. So I will cling to you, my God, my King. It's all about clinging to him. And no matter what we go through in our lives.